the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. Wake, for the sun who scattered into flight the stars before him from the field of night, drives night along with them from heaven and strikes the Sultan's turret with a shaft of light. Before the phantom of false morning died, methought a voice within the tavern cried, When all the temple is prepared within, why nods the drowsy worshipper outside? And as the cock crew, those who stood before the tavern shouted, Open then the door, you know how little while we have to stay, and once departed may return no more. Now the new year reviving old desires, the thoughtful soul to solitude retires, where the white hand of Moses on the bow puts out and Jesus from the ground suspires. He rolled his rose and Jamshid's seven-ringed cup where no one knows, but still a ruby kindles in the vine and many a garden by the water blows. And David's lips are locked, but in divine high-piping Pelevi with wine, 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 red wine, the nightingale cries to the rose, that sallow cheek of hers to incarnadine. Come, fill the cup, and in the fire of spring your winter garment of repentance fling. The bird of time has but a little way to flutter, and the bird is on the wing. Whether at Naishapur or Babylon, whether the cup with sweet or bitter run, the wine of life keeps oozing drop by drop, the leaves of life keep falling one by one. Each morn a thousand roses brings, you say, yes, but where leaves the rose of yesterday? And this first summer month that brings the rose shall take Jamshid and Kaikobad away. Well, let it take them. What have we to do with Kaikobad the Great or Kaikoshru? Let Zal and Rustum bluster as they will, or Hatim call to supper, heed not you. With me along the strip of herbage strown that just divides the desert from the sown, where name of slave and sultan is forgot, and peace to Mahmud on his golden throne. A book of verses underneath the bough, a jug of wine, a loaf of bread, and thou, beside me singing in the wilderness. O oh, wilderness, where paradise are now. Some for the glories of this world, and some sigh for the prophet's paradise to come. Ah, take the cash and let the credit go, nor heed the rumble of a distant drum. Look to the blowing rose about us. Lo, laughing, she says, into the world I blow. At once the silken tassel of my purse tear, and its treasure on the garden throw. And those who husbanded the golden grain, and those who flung it to the winds like rain, alike to no such orient earth are turned, as buried once, men want dug up again. The worldly hope men set their hearts upon turns ashes, or it prospers, and anon like snow upon the desert's dusty face, lighting a little hour or two, is gone. Think in this battered caravanserai, whose portals are alternate night and day, how sultan after sultan with his pomp abode his destined hour and went his way. They say the lion and the lizard keep the courts where Jamshid gloried and drank deep. And Baram, that great hunter, the wild ass stamps o'er his head, but cannot break his sleep. I sometimes think that never blows so red the rose as where some buried Caesar bled, that every hyacinth the garden wears dropped in her lap from some once-loved head. And this reviving herb, whose tender green fledges the river lip on which we lean, ah, lean upon it lightly, for who knows from what once lovely lip it springs unseen. Ah, my beloved, fill the cup that clears today of past regrets and future fears. Tomorrow, why, tomorrow I may be myself with yesterday's seven thousand years. For some we loved the loveliest and the best, that from his vintage rolling time hath pressed, have drunk their cup a round or two before, and one by one crept silently to rest. And we that now make merry in the room they left, and summer dresses in new bloom, ourselves must we beneath the couch of earth descend, ourselves to make a couch, for whom? 
Ah, make the most of what we yet may spend Before we too into the dust descend Dust into dust and under dust to lie Sans wine, sans song, sans singer and sans end Alike for those who for today prepare And those that after some tomorrow stare A muetzin from the tower of darkness cries Fools, your reward is neither here nor there why, all the saints and sages who discussed of the two worlds so wisely, they are thrust like foolish prophets forth. Their words to scorn are scattered, and their mouths are stopped with dust. Myself, when young, did eagerly frequent a doctor and saint, and heard great argument about it and about, but evermore came out by the same door wherein I went. With them the seed of wisdom did I sow, and with mine own hand wrought to make it grow. And this was all the harvest that I reaped. I came like water, and like wind I go. Into this universe, and why not knowing, nor whence like willy-nilly flowing. And out of it, as wind along the waste, I know not whither, willy-nilly blowing. What without asking, hither hurried whence? And without asking, whither hurried hence? Oh, many a cup of this forbidden wine must drown the memory of that insolence. Up from earth's centre through the seventh gate I rose, and on the throne of Saturn sate, and many a knot unravelled by the road, but not the master knot of human fate. There was the door to which I found no key, there was the veil through which I might not see. Some little talk a while of me and thee there was, and then no more of thee and me. Earth could not answer, nor the seas that mourn in flowing purple of their Lord forlorn, nor rolling heaven with all his signs revealed and hidden by the sleeve of night and morn. Then of the thee in me who works behind the veil I lifted up my hands to find. A lamp amid the darkness, and I heard as from without the me within thee blind. Then to the lip of this poor earthen urn I leaned the secret of my life to learn, and lip to lip it murmured, While you live, drink, for once dead you never shall return. I think the vessel that with fugitive articulation answered once did live, and drink, and ah, the passive lip I kissed, how many kisses might it take and give? For I remember stopping by the way to watch a potter thumping his wet clay, and with its all obliterated tongue it murmured, Gently, brother, gently pray. And has not such a story from of old, down man's successive generations rolled, of such a clod of saturated earth cast by the maker into human mould? And not a drop that from our cups we throw for earth to drink of, but may steal below to quench the fire of anguish in some eye there hidden, far beneath and long ago. As then the tulip for her morning sup of heavenly vintage from the soil looks up, do you devoutly do the like till heaven to earth in virtue like an empty cup? Perplexed no more with human or divine, tomorrow's tangle to the winds resign, and lose your fingers in the tresses of the cypress slender minister of wine. And if the wine you drink, the lip you press, end in what all begins and ends in yes, Think then you are today what yesterday you were. Tomorrow you shall not be less. So when that angel of the darker drink at last shall find you by the river brink, and offering his cup invite your soul forth to your lips to quaff, you shall not shrink. Why, if the soul can fling the dust aside and naked on the air of heaven ride, were not a shame, were not a shame for him in this clay carcass crippled to abide? "'Tis but a tent where takes his one day's rest "'a sultan to the realm of death addressed. "'The sultan rises, and the dark farash strikes, "'and prepares it for another guest. "'And fear not, lest existence closing your account and mine "'should know the like no more. "'The eternal sake from that bowl has poured "'millions of bubbles like us, and will pour. When you and I behind the veil are past, oh, but the long, long while the world shall last, 
which of our coming and departure heeds as the sea's self should heed a pebble cast. A moment's halt, a momentary taste of being from the well amid the waste, and lo, the phantom caravan has reached the nothing it set out from. Oh, make haste. Would you that spangle of existence spend about the secret? Quick about it, friend. A hair perhaps divides the false and true, and upon what, prithee, may life depend? A hair perhaps divides the false and true, yes, and a single alif were the clue, could you but find it to the treasure house, and peradventure to the master too, whose secret presence through creation's veins, running quicksilver-like eludes your pains, taking all shapes from ma to mahi, and they change and perish all, but he remains. A moment guessed, then back behind the fold, immersed of darkness round the drama rolled, which for the pastime of eternity he doth himself contrive, enact, behold. But if in vain, down on the stubborn floor of earth, and up to heaven's unopening door, you gaze today while you are you, how then tomorrow, you, when shall be you no more? Waste not your hour, nor in the vain pursuit of this and that endeavour and dispute. Better be jocund with the fruitful grape than sadden after none or bitter fruit. You know, my friends, with what a brave carouse I made a second marriage in my house, divorced old barren reason from my bed, and took the daughter of the vine to spouse. For is and is not, though with rule and line, and up and down by logic I define, of all that one should care to fathom, I was never deep in anything but wine. Ah, but my computations, people say, reduced the year to better reckoning. Nay, it was only striking from the calendar, unborn tomorrow and dead yesterday. And lately, by the tavern door agape, came shining through the dusk an angel shape, bearing a vessel on his shoulder, and he bid me taste of it. And twas the grape, the grape that can with logic absolute the two and seventy jarring sects confute, the sovereign alchemist that in a trice life's leaden metal into gold transmute, the mighty Mahmud, Allah breathing Lord, that a horde of fears and sorrows that infest the soul scatters before him with his whirlwind sword. Why be this juice the growth of God? Who dare blaspheme the twisted tendril as a snare? A blessing, we should use it, should we not? And if a curse, why then, who set it there? I must abjure the balm of life, I must, scared by some after-reckoning tain on trust, or lured with hope of some diviner drink to fill the cup when crumbled into dust. Oh, threats of hell and hopes of paradise, one thing at least is certain, this life flies. One thing is certain, and the rest is lies. The flower that once has blown forever dies. Strange is it not that of the myriads who before us passed the door of darkness through, not one returns to tell us of the road which to discover we must travel to. The revelations of devout and learned who rose before us and as prophets burned are all but stories which awoke from sleep they told their comrades, and to sleep returned. I sent my soul through the invisible, some letter of that afterlife to spell, and by and by my soul returned to me and answered, I myself am heaven and hell. Heaven but the vision of fulfilled desire, and hell the shadow from a soul on fire, cast on the darkness into which ourselves so late emerge from, shall so soon expire. We are no other than a moving row of magic shadow shapes that come and go, round with the sun-illumined lantern held in midnight by the master of the show. But helpless pieces of the game he plays upon this checkerboard of nights and days, hither and thither moves and checks and slays, and one by one back in the closet lays, the ball no question makes of eyes and nose, but here or there strikes the player goes, and he that tossed you down into the field, he knows about it all, he knows, he knows. 
the moving finger writes, and having writ moves on, nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all your tears wash out a word of it. And that inverted bowl they call the sky, where under crawling cooped we live and die, lift not your hands to it for help, for it as impotently moves as you or I. With earth's first clay they did the last man need, and there of the last harvest sowed the seed. And the first morning of creation wrote what the last dawn of reckoning shall read. Yesterday this day's madness did prepare, tomorrow's silence, triumph or despair. Drink, for you know not whence you came, nor why. Drink, for you know not why you go, nor where. I tell you this, when started from the goal, over the flaming shoulders of the foal of heaven, Parwin and Mushtari they flung, in my predestined plot of dust and soul. The vine had struck a fibre, which about, if clings my being, let the dervish flout of my base metal may be filed a key that shall unlock the door he howls without. And this I know, whether the one true light kindled to love or wrath consume me quite, one flash of it within the tavern court, better than in the temple lost outright. What, out of senseless nothing to provoke a conscious something to resent the yoke of unpermitted pleasure under pain of everlasting penalties, if broke? What, from his helpless creature be repaid, Pure gold for what he lent him dross allayed, sue for a debt he never did contract and cannot answer, oh, the sorry trade. O oh, thou who didst with pitfall and with gin beset the road I was to wander in, thou wilt not with predestined evil round enmesh, and then impute my fall to sin. O oh, thou who man of baser earth didst make, and even with paradise devise the snake, for all the sin wherewith the face of man is blackened, man's forgiveness give and take. As under cover of departing day slunk hunger-stricken Wamazan away, once more within the potter's house alone I stood, surrounded by the shapes of clay, shapes of all sorts and sizes, great and small, that stood along the floor and by the wall, and some loquacious vessels were, and some listened, perhaps, but never talked at all. Said one among them, surely not in vain, my substance of the common earth was ta'en, and to this figure moulded to be broke, or trampled back to shapeless earth again? Then said a second, ne'er a peevish boy would break the bowl from which he drank in joy, and he that with his hand the vessel made will surely not in after wrath destroy. After a momentary silence spake some vessel of a more ungainly make. They sneer at me for leaning all awry. What did the hand then of the potter shake? Whereat some one of the loquacious lot, I think a Sufi pipkin waxing hot, all this of pot and potter? Tell me then, who is the potter, pray, and who the pot? Why, said another, some there are who tell of one who threatens he will toss to hell the luckless pots he marred in making. Pish, he's a good fellow and twill all be well. Well, murmured one, let whoso make or buy, my clay with long oblivion is gone dry. But fill me with the old familiar juice, methinks I might recover by and by. So while the vessels one by one were speaking, the little moon looked in that all were seeking, and then they jogged each other. Brother, brother, now for the porter's shoulder not a creaking. Ah, with the grape my fading life provide, and wash the body whence the life has died, and lay me shrouded in the living leaf by some not unfrequented garden side that even my buried ashes such a snare of vintage shall fling up into the air, as not a true believer passing by, but shall be overtaken unaware. Indeed, the idols I have loved so long have done my credit in this world much wrong, have drowned my glory in a shallow cup, and sold my reputation for a song. Indeed, indeed, repentance oft before I swore, but was I sober when I swore? 
And then, and then came spring, and rose in hand, my threadbare penitence of pieces tore. And much as wine has played the infidel and robbed me of my robe of honour, well, I wonder often what the vintners buy, one half so precious as the stuff they sell. Yet, ah, that spring should vanish with the rose, that youth's sweet-scented manuscript should close. The nightingale that in the branches sang, ah, whence and whither flown again, who knows? Would but the desert of the fountain yield one glimpse, if dimly yet indeed revealed, to which the fainting traveller might spring, as springs the trampled herbage of the field. Would but some winged angel, ere too late, arrest the yet unfolded roll of fate, and make the stern recorder otherwise enregister, or quite obliterate. Ah, love, could you and I with him conspire to grasp this sorry scheme of things entire, would not we shatter it to bits, and then remould it nearer to the heart's desire? Yon rising moon that looks for us again, how oft hereafter will she wax and wane? How oft hereafter rising look for us through this same garden and for one in vain? And when, like her, O Saki, you shall pass among the guests star scattered on the grass, and in your joyous errand reach the spot where I made one, turn down an empty glass. The Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, introduced to the West over a century ago by Edward Fitzgerald, exists in many manuscripts. The one on which Robert Graves and I have based our translation was written by one Sayyid Nur Ahmad Naqshbandi Bukharavi in the year 1153 AD and presented to one of my ancestors by the then Ghaznavid Sultan Taj al-Dawla Khusrau Malik when the Ghaznavid Empire, based on Ghazna in Afghanistan, encompassed much of Persia, Afghanistan, and northern India. It is now in the library of the custodians of the tradition in Afghanistan. The two verses that I would like to read in Persian are our verses 1 and 11. They have been chosen because in their Romanized form, they offer no great pronunciation difficulties to those unfamiliar with the language who might like to familiarize themselves with their poetic cadence. Khurshid Kamandi Sob Barbam Afgand Kai Khusrawi Rose Bada Darjam Afgand Maikhur Kemanadi Sahargi Khezan Awaze Ishrabu that I am Afghan. Gardasti had the Marzigandum Nani, as my Kadui, the Gusfandi Rani, Waanga Manwatu Nishasta Darwairani, Aishbuad on Nahadi Har Sultani. Rubayat of Omar Khayyam. While dawn, day's herald, straddling the whole sky, offers the drowsy world a toast to wine, the sun spills early gold on city roofs, day's regal host replenishing his jug. Then shouts ring out among us of the tavern, rise too, you good-for-nothing tavern lad, refill our empty bowls with today's measure before the measure of our lives be filled. Loud crows the cock for his dawn drink, my Saki. Here's ten we in the vintner's row, my Saki. Is this an hour for prayer? Silence, my Saki. Defy old custom, Saki. Drink your fill. Rarest of lads, rising to greet the dawn. Favour my bowl of crystal. Pour red wine. This moment, filched from the grey corpse of night, we long may siphon, never repossess. Now that our world finds riches within reach, live hearts awake and hanker for wide plains where every bough 
is blanched by Moses' hand, and every breeze perfumed by Jesus' breath. A glorious morning, neither hot nor dank, with cheeks of roses newly bathed in dew. The nightingale in Palevi prescribes for every sallower cheek wine, wine, and wine. Most guiltily each morning I determine from wine in bowl or goblet to abstain. But this is rose time. Lord, why should I blush so soon of my repentance to repent? Life passes. What is bulk? What is Baghdad? The cup filled. Should we care whether with bitter or sweet? Drink on. Know that long after us, the moon must keep her long determined course. Rest in the rose's shade, though winds have burst a world of blossom, petals fall to dust. Gem sheds and cosrews by the hundred thousand lie tumbled by a similar stroke of time. One ample draught outdoes the fame of Carwus, Cobat the Glorious, or Imperial Tus. Friend, never bow your neck even to Rustum, nor proffer thanks even to Hetim Tai. Should our day's portion be one wheaten loaf, a haunch of mutton, and a gourd of wine, set for us two alone on the wide plain, no sultan's bounty could evoke such joy. A gourd of red wine and a sheaf of poems. A bare subsistence, half a loaf, not more, supplied us two alone in the free desert. What sultan could we envy on his throne? They say that Eden is bedewled with furies. I answer that grape nectar has no price. So laugh at long-term credit, stick to coin, though distant drums beguile your greedy ear. The rose cried, I am generous of largesse and laughter. Laughingly my petals blow across the world. The ribbons of my purse snap, and its load of coin flies everywhere. Before fate springs her ambush for your life, Command our tavern lad to fetch you drink. Fool, your dry corpse will be no treasure trove for proud posterity to disinter. Think of this world as modelled at your whim, perfectly trim for you from east to west. Yet know yourself a snowdrift on the sand, heaped for two days or three, then thawed and gone. This ruined caravanserai called Earth, stable of day with night, a piebald steed. Form a pavilion of a hundred gem sheds, a hundred bardams, one time hall of state. palace gorged in by gigantic baram. The vixen whelps there, and the lion nods. Baram, who hunted none but onigas, lies tumbled in a pitfall called the grave. Each rose or tulip bed that you encounter is sure to mark a king's last resting place, while scented violets rising from black soil to call the burial of some lovely girl. Green cresses also, masking a stream's bank, start up from creatures of angelic kind. Tread softly on such evidence of beauty. Red lips and rosy cheeks fast slumbering. Never anticipate tomorrow's sorrow. Live always in this paradisal now, fated however soon to house instead with others gone these seven thousand years. 
My tavern comrades vanish one by one, innocent victims of death's furtive stroke. All had been honest drinkers, but all failed two rounds before the last to drain their bowls. Rise up, why mourn this transient world of men? Pass your whole life in gratitude and joy. Had humankind been freed from womb and tomb, when would your turn have come to live and love? Allow no shadow of regret to cloud you, no absurd grief to overcast your days. Never renounce love songs or lawns or kisses until your clay lies mixed with elder clay. Some ponder long on doctrine and belief, some teeter between certitude and doubt. Suddenly, out of hiding, leaps the guide with fools. The way is neither that nor this. Most of them, gone before we go, my Saki, drowse in their dusty bed of pride, my Saki. Drink yet again, and hear the truth at last. Whatever words they spoke were wind, my Saki. Yet those who proved most perfect of our kind mounted the soaring burak of their thoughts. Study your essence. Like the firmament, your head will turn and turn vertiginously. In childhood once, we crouched before our teacher growing content in time with what he taught. How does the story end? What happened to us? We came like water, and like wind we're gone. When falcon-like I darted from my world of mystery, upward and upward flying, no sage stood there to greet me with the truth. So back I dived by the same narrow door, Man's brain has never solved the eternal why, nor foraged past the frontier set for thought. All intellect, be sure, proves nugatory, however hard we either teach or learn. In agitation I was brought to birth, and learnt nothing from life but wonder at it. Reluctantly we leave, still uninformed, why in the world we came, or went, or where. My presence here has been no choice of mine. Fate hounds me most unwillingly away. Rise, wrap a cloth about your loins, my Saki, and swill away the misery of this world. Were the choice mine to come, should I have come, or to become, what might I have become? What better fortune could I then have chanced on than not to come, become, or even be? Earth's perigee to Saturn's apogee, I have unveiled all astral mysteries, breaking the barriers of deceit and fraud, leaping all obstacles but fate's design. Not you, not I, can learn the inmost secret. The eternal cipher proves too hard to break. Behind God's curtain, voices babble of us. But when it parts, where then shall we two be? Greedily to the bowl my lips I pressed and asked, how might I sue for green old age? Pressing its lips to mine, it muttered darkly, Drink up. Once gone, you shall return no more. This jug was, ages past, a doleful lover, like me, who had pursued a dream, like me. This handle at its neck was once an arm entwined about some neck he loved too well. 
Yesterday in the market stood a potter, pounding relentlessly his batch of clay. My inner ear could hear it sigh and groan. Brother, I once was like you. Treat me gently. In the potter's workroom, shadowed by the wheel, I pondered, watching how the master made handles and covers for his jugs and pitchers from clay, from hands of kings, from beggars' feet. I wandered further down the potter's row. Continuously they tried new skills on clay. Yet some, devoid of vision, never noted the ancestral dust on every turning wheel. Each drop of wine that Saki negligently spills on the ground may quench the fires of grief in some sore heart. All praise to him who offers such medicine to relieve its melancholy. Raise the bowl high like tulip cups at Noroz, and if the moon-faced one has time to spare, drink gloriously deep. The brutal time will strike you down with never a warning yell. Avoid all greed and envy, unperturbed by permutations, foul succeeding fair. Possess your bowl, play with your loved one's curls. Soon the whole scene must vanish past recourse. Kayam, should you be drunk with love, rejoice. Or bedded with your heart's delight, rejoice. Your end is no more than the whole world's end. Fancy yourself no longer there, then smile. Oppose all resurrections of your past. Resent no anguish still prepared for you. On your entrance and your exit, drink. Never cast your essence to the winds. This vast, unmeasured, universal vault offers one bowl for all mankind to drink. When your turn comes, refrain from tears. Be merry, lift high the bowl, then drain it to its lees. Dear love, when you are free to slough your skin and become naked spirit, Soaring far across God's empire, end, you will blush that you lay cramped so long in body's jail. Kayam, your mortal carcass is a tent, your soul a sultan, and your camp all time. The groom called Fate maps out tomorrow's march and strikes a tent when, sultan-like, you move. Kayam, Though this blue-stained royal pavilion tautens its golden guy ropes against entry, a deathless saki draws kayams in thousands like wine bubbles out of creation's bowl. This world must long survive our poor departure, persisting without name or note of us. Before we came, it never grudged our absence. When we have gone, how can it feel regret? The caravan of life passes in strangeness. Come, seize one moment passing joyfully. Why mourn for friends and their tomorrows, Saki? Pour out more wine. The night is passing too. Dear lad, steeped as you are in mysteries, why should you load your heart with nameless cares? Let projects fade away. Disport yourself in the brief hour when life detains you here. One breath parts infidelity from faith. Another breath parts certitude from doubt. Yet cherish breath, never make light of it. Is not such breath the harvest of our being? My heart complained. I long for inspiration. I long for wisdom to be taught and learned. I breathed the letter A. My heart replied, A is enough to occupy this house.
the moon, by her own nature skilled in change, varies from animal form to vegetable. Destroy the form, you destroy nothingness. For what she seems survives her not yet being. Bring wine to allay the fever of my heart. Existence here runs as quicksilver runs. Rise up, for wakefulness is what sleep treasures, and fires of youth like water drain away. Hidden you live, inscrutable as ever, a person sometimes, but sometimes a place, showing this costly spectacle to no one, you, the sole audience, and the actor too. Could my heart know in life, life's hidden secrets, death could inform me of God's hidden secrets. Since I know nothing of myself today, what can I know tomorrow, after death? Those dupes of intellect and logic die in arguments on being or not being. Go, ignoramus, choose your vintage well. From dust like theirs grow none but unripe grapes. Eternity, eternally discussed. In hours of joy, wine will not play us false. Knowledge and practice lie beyond our scope, but wine solves all enigmas that obtrude. I shall possess myself of a great goblet with pipes of wine for its replenishment, annulling former ties to faith and reason by marriage with this daughter of the vine. As one familiar with all exoterics of being and not being, who has plumbed the abyss of shame, how can I greet as valid any condition short of drunkenness? Misguided foes call me philosopher. God knows this is the one thing I am not. I am even less. In such a nest of sorrows, I cannot tell you even who I am. In drink this evening, as I passed the tavern, a fellow toper met me with a flask. Cried I, Old man, have you no awe of God? Come, he said. God is bountiful. Come, drink. Banish your crowding griefs with wine. Disperse your memories of the two and seventy sects. And praise wine's alchemy that still can banish with one red draught, more than a thousand spites. I drink wine as my fellow topers drink. How much I drink can seem of small concern to God, who knows well that I drink. Abstention from drink would make God's knowledge ignorance. They say, be sober, lest you die of drink and earn hell fire on God's last judgment day. Nevertheless, my blaze of drunkenness outshines both worlds, your now and your hereafter. My wandering feet have led me through far plains and valleys. I have strayed this way and that, yet never found a traveller who could boast that he had ever trod the same road twice. Exemplars of the cultured and genteel though moulding candles from these predicates, have never lighted one to mark the way by night, but told their fables and slept on. Already at creation I stretched out for pen and tablet, also heaven and hell, but prudently my teacher warned me, pen and tablet, heaven and hell, lie in yourself. My broken body serves the sky for girdle. My precious tears carved out the Jaihan's bed. Hell is a furnace for my suffering soul. Paradise, my one moment of release. This vault 
underneath which we live bemused is, so to speak, God's magic shadow show. With sun for lamp, the world as a wide screen for countless lie rehearsing silhouettes. Let me speak out unallegorically. We are mere puppets of our master, toys on the table of existence, one by one, flung back in the toy box of non-existence. Poor ball, struck by fate's heavy polo mallet, running whichever way it drives you, numbed of sense, though he who set you on your course, he knows, he knows, he knows. What we shall be is written, and we are so, heedless of good or evil pen, right on. By the first day, all futures were decided, which gives our griefs and pains irrelevancy. Evil and good dispute the heart's possession. Sorrow and joy are man's predestined blot. Live in no awe of planets. Planets are one thousand times more impotent than we. Truth is hyperbole, my heart of hearts. Why are you so distressed by grief and labor? Yield to your destiny, conform, conform. Tomorrow, too, is framed by destiny. Yesterday they determined your today, exempt from yesterday's inept desires. Rejoice that by no effort of your own, tomorrow also is mapped out for you. But while the Eternal One created me, he word by word spelt out my lesson, love, and seized my heart, and from a fragment cut keys to the storehouse of reality. When first the sky's wild horses won their saddles, when Jupiter first blazed, the Pleiades too, my fate was published from God's judgment seat. How can I err? I act as it is written. Mysteries broached with joy in tavern talk have far more substance than a mumbled prayer to you, my last and first, my soul's creator, empowered either to seer or succor me. When, bending low, God moulded me from clay, incontrovertibly my life was ordered. Without his order, I abstain from crime. Why should I burn, then, on his judgment day? That sin is irresistible, he knows, yet he commands us to abstain from sin. Thus, irresistibility confounds us with prohibition lean but never fall. The clay from which this human frame was moulded forewarned a hundred wonders for me. Yet, could I be worse or better than I am, who was, even before he fashioned me? On every path I take, your snares are spread to entrap me, should I walk without due care. Utter extremes acknowledge your vast sway, you order all things, yet you call me rebel. If sinfully I drudge, where is your mercy? If clouds darken my heart, where is your light? Heaven rewards my practice of obedience. Rewards well earned are good, but what of grace? You, always cognizant of every secret, who succor all flesh in its hour of need, grant me repentance, grant me mercy too. You who forgive all, you who punish all, ordaining every cause for life or death, guarding this tattered robe we call the sky. Say, am I sinful? Are you not my master? Who sins when you alone created me? I saw at least two thousand pots last night in Potter's Row, not all of which were mute, 
and one cried loudly, Friends, where is the potter? Where is the salesman? Where the customer? Ramazan's moon, I hear, rides high again. Soon none may give new rain to hot desire. Yet before Shaban ends, I shall have drunk sweet wine enough to float me through that fast. There's one bowl praised by the wide, wise world that tempts a toper to a hundred kisses. And yet the potter moulds this fragile clay only to fall and shatter on the ground. The elements that constitute a bowl hate all besotted murderers of bowls, bowls deftly moulded for the love of whom, then dashed to pieces as a curse on whom. Our guardian chose our natures. Is he then delinquent when he treats us with disorder? We ask, why break the best of us? and murmur, is the pot guilty if it stands awry? Though judgment day should prove a grand ordeal, handled, they say, by a short-tempered judge, yet never fear, good has a final word. Nothing of evil can proceed from good. When this existence finds an end at last, when all I am scatters to the four winds, let them remold me as a jug, that then I may revive, well soused in glorious drink. When destiny, I say, has trod me down, cutting my root of hope, sweet friends, assemble, and from my clay contrive a single jug to thrive again, well soused in glorious drink. Shawal is with us. Ramazan has passed. Salute the month of joy in lutes and singing. When wineskins for the shoulder cry aloud, Here come the porters, one after another. Should I fall dead, wash my poor corpse in wine, read it into the grave with drinking songs. On judgment day, if you have need of me, delve in the soil beneath our tavern door. Take heed to pamper me with bowls that change a pasty-coloured cheek to ruby red. When I fall dead, I say, wash me in wine and use the vine's own slats for coffin wood. So lovingly I drink, the wine's bouquet will scent the air where I lie underground. A toper treading past my grave will pause to sniff and find himself ignobly drunk. Once, years ago, inclined to prayer and fasting, I swore my soul was free and given to God. Alas for purity, once more besmirched, for a vow broken by one sip of wine. Though drink has rotted my high reputation, reject it I will not while I yet breathe wondering often what the vintners buy equal in value with the wine they sell. Ah me, the book of early glory closes. The green of spring makes way for wintry snow. The cheerful bird of youth flutters away. I hardly noticed how it came or went. If only I could find some tranquil spot for sleep, if only this long road would end, if only from some inner core of earth we might spring up once more to bud and blossom. If only I controlled God's universe, would I not wipe away these faulty heavens and build from nothing a true paradise where all souls could achieve their heart's desire? Since no voice here can promise you tomorrow, content yourself, my mortal moon, with bowls emptied by moonlight. One fine night, the moon may search the world for us, but find us gone. Sweet friends, 
in joy assembled here together. Never forget us, once your sweetest friends. Before you greet the jug, Kayam adjures you, when his turn comes, turn down his empty bow. Kayam, who stitched the hides for wisdom's tent, has tumbled in grief's clutches. He lies burning. The shears of death have closed upon his guise, and hope, the broker, sells him for a song. Fools, with damnation as your destiny, sentenced to fuel the eternal fires of hell, how long will you still plead for Omar's pardon, nudging his mercy from the merciful? Though pearls in praise of God I never strung, though dust of sin lies clotted on my brow, yet will I not despair of mercy. When did Omar argue that the one was two? The palace with huge walls soaring to heaven, where prostrate kings did reverence at the gate a ring dove perches on its battlements. Where, where it coos, where, where.